I'd like to show you JPAMS, which is Lafayette Parish's Student Information Hub. It's online, and I have a bookmark for it already, and I suggest, you know, it's a good idea to do the same just to have a quick reference. So if you want to take a moment and type in jpams.lpssonline.com forward slash jcampus forward slash. Now once the window pops up, your username is going to be your email address. So it's everything before the at lpssonline.com. Your password is going to be the same password you use to log into your Gmail or your Google account. So you're going to use the same password. Then you click login. So this is the landing page. And the two areas that we use the most are classroom and post discipline. I'm going to start with post discipline because this is at the beginning of the school year. This is how we're going to find our students and their schedules. So I'm going to click on post discipline. And the, this window pops up. Now, don't worry, it's not going to actually post a discipline for them, but it's our kind of backwards way about trying to find where our kids are. We have access to all the students in the district so it's it's all in one place before you even look up a student name in this area you need to make sure that the incident date is an actual school day so since today is september 24th it is a school day if i were to look up a student it would show up if for some reason you're on the weekend or it happens to be a holiday that you're trying to look up a student or before classes actually start whenever we are doing um, in services, you would have to choose a date that would be an actual school day. So I'm going to click today. And I'm going to use my daughter as a reference because of privacy laws and I'm approving it <laughs> and I'm making the video so I don't mind that you see her information so you would type in the last name and students will pop up in alphabetical order according to last name choose the student you want and if there are any alert codes the first thing we'll do it will pop up before anything else so I can close this the red sped area will show you if the student has an exceptionality other than a talented service. So my daughter is not in any talented service, but she does have the exceptionality of autism. So this is going to pop up at the very top of the IEP information is autism. And who the IEP teacher would be highlighted here. This is important to keep track of because if your student has an exceptionality as well as talented services, we as a talented teacher are not the primary contact for the IEP. It would be the first category in their SPED tab would be the primary contact person. And if they have a 504 plan, this would be highlighted. If they have health issues, this would be highlighted. And my daughter does get frequent headaches. So it's good to check anything that might be highlighted up here to see if there's something that you need to make note of, especially health issues and 504. The 504 plan is something that you need to contact guidance for and have a copy of it in the historical folder, which are filed throughout the year, but mostly at the end of the year. Okay, now I have my student up, and I'm going to click on the gear. The gear will pop up, and you can go to student, student demographic. This student demographic shows information like the parent's name, their address, the student's email address, age, grade level, typical demographic page. 
Go ahead and print the demo page and keep a copy of it. Whether you keep a copy of it digitally, like in your Google um, Drive or an actual print copy, it's up to you. But it's nice to have them handy because we refer to them um, often. I'm going to click the gear again. And I'm going to go to schedule, print schedule. It's not actually going to print the schedule. It's going to pull up another pop-up window that has the student schedule on it. I do suggest though that you print it to have a copy and any changes that are made on the schedule will happen in real time. So especially at the beginning of the year when we're starting to print out demo pages and schedules to figure out where all of us are gonna go to and what schools, etc. We usually have to check the schedule a few times because as students start attending school and they switch classes, um, things get a little bit haywire. So before we even go to see our first student, we want to make sure that we check it again, that their schedule is the same. And if anything changes, just print out the new schedule and toss the old one. To look up my next student, I'm just gonna click in this area and the pop-up window will show up again. Sometimes you have to wait for them to build the list from the server. And each time you look up a new student without actually posting the discipline, this window will pop up. All you need to do is close it out because we're not actually making a referral. Now, his SPED tab is orange because he is in talented art. And that's it. He has no other exceptionality. And you can see that his IEP teacher, and that means that the teacher who's in charge of writing and implementing the IEP is Troy, which is right here. And if a student is, let's say, talented in several areas like music, theater, uh, visual arts are just two of them. What we do is we try and help each other out, have the IEP teacher be the person who has the least heavy schedule. So we don't want to put extra burden on our fellow co-workers. And so that way no one gets overly stressed and we can still enjoy the job. Okay, also I'm going to look up a student who I know has and exceptionality as well as talented services. So you can see what that looks like. Once again, you see this pop-up window, just close it. Now this student has his initial diagnosis is this specific learning disability, meaning that his IEP teacher is gonna be Gretchen Babineau. You also want to make sure that your specific discipline is listed in the special ed information. It's always good just to double check to make sure that no one slips through the cracks. But in this case, Gretchen Babineau would be the primary contact person and who would write the IEP. That doesn't mean you don't have to do anything. You still need to put in the goals for the student in the IEP but you're not the primary person to make contact with the parent to schedule and get everything set up and verified. The student also has SBLC. And SBLC means that if a student is on the verge of possibly not passing, if they just need a little extra help and guidance and just someone else to keep an eye out on them, make sure they're staying on track, That'll pop up in the SBLC information. So I think that's pretty much all I need to show you in the post-discipline area. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So to recap, when we first are determining our students, you would go to post-discipline.
click on the area next to name in the pop-up window, write the last name, choose the student, click on the gear, student, student demographic, and then you can print this. Also go to student schedule, print schedule, and print their schedule. What I typically do is once these two things are printed on the student demographic page, I will write down who their primary IEP teacher is, and if they have any other exceptionality, anything else that is highlighted in red or orange, I will write that information down to at the bottom of the page. The more information that you can have handy, the more time you're going to save. It may take a little bit of time initially, but it'll be better in the long run. So that's how you look up a student who is not currently on your roster. So always make sure that the incident date is a current day of school. Now the other tab we use is Classroom. This is not to be confused with Google Classroom. That's something totally different. This is Classroom as far as grading and um, checking attendance and making sure that your students are on your, on your school roster. When the classroom page opens up, initially in the school area, it's gonna be 700, which means just central office. You're gonna click in this area and choose a school that you are currently teaching at. I'm gonna choose Como, my name, the course, and depending on the school, they all kind of do it differently. In the course area, sometimes you'll have like multiple ones depending on the grade level. Some schools have it where everyone is on one. That's not as important as making sure that it has this ENR in the title. This means that the class is an enrichment class. It's not graded for Carnegie units. And sometimes there are, you know, we're all human. Counselors make mistakes. So it's our job to make sure that ENR is listed right here. That way the student doesn't get an actual grade for it. They get more of a grading scale as far as like satisfactory, not as satisfactory, but it doesn't count against them on their GPA. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to scroll over, choose marking period, first nine weeks. All right. Your students will all be listed. If you go to show me, you can check mark the different categories so that way it highlights it in your roster. So if I don't have any of these highlighted, all of my students are, are there. But it's nice to have a quick reference for if a student has um, another exceptionality, if they have a 504 plan or health condition. It's just a nice reminder whenever you log into your gradebook. Here, since the student is on your roster, just like the little gear in post-discipline, you have a gear right here. You can look at your student demographic here. You can do their print schedule here. But what's most important, as far as the gear is concerned, is student test analysis. This information is used on an IEP. So what I do at the beginning of the year, since this information is not gonna change throughout the year, I will look up their test scores from the most recent state standardized test and make note of the recent scores. So this one would be Geometry 770 Mastery. 
English 1, 778 Mastery. You can write that on the demo page. You can write that wherever you want. But when it comes to writing an IEP, you're going to need these test scores. So why not go ahead and just have it handy with your demo page? Now you can also, if you're at a school and you're wondering, did my kid forget to come to class today? You can check attendance. So click on the attendance little school box and it'll show you currently who is and is not at school. So let's say this student didn't show up. Well, I could see that they have an unexcused absence, so they're not here for the day. We do not take attendance in JPAMs. Let me say that once again. We do not post attendance in JPAMs. We just look at it. We have our own separate role book or however you want to document it, whether the student showed up for your class or not. Because there's times where the student didn't show up to your class because maybe they had a test. They're on campus. So we don't want to send an alert out to a parent that a student is not on campus when they are actually there because they didn't show up to your enrichment class. So we just look at attendance. We do not post in there. And we keep a separate role book for our own records of student attendance. We also post grades in classroom on um, JPAMs. So go to assignments, um, a new assignment, and you can title it, I don't know, Project 1. Category. We don't have a category because it's not a Carnegie unit. Regular ed classroom teachers have to choose between a formative or summative, but for us, this is enrichment. They're only going to get an OS, N, or U for their grade. You could put points. You can do the dates that it's taught from. But mainly, you just have to have a project. And then save. You give your grades to your students. Each nine weeks, you have to put grades in. If the student is not doing their work, give them the appropriate grade for the assignment. When we report in SIR, which will be another video, that's where we inform parents on the progression of the student in the program. Posting grades in this classroom only allows for something to show up on their report card and their transcripts. It's separate from the special ed reporting system that we use as talented services. This is district-based, whereas the SIR is state-based. So be honest on how the student is doing. It will reinforce the validity of the program and keep our standards high. And at the end of the nine weeks, you should have five projects. If they do thumbnail sketches for a larger project or if they explore media, that could be a project. You don't have to give any details about it. This is just for their report card. And then you can close it out. So I'm going to go over the classroom quickly without so much talking. So click on classroom. School. Choose the school you want to look at. Choose the course, making sure it says ENR for enrichment. Choose the marking period depending on what nine weeks we're in. And if you forget to do grades or you have to do something to their grade um, and we already are in the second nine weeks, when you try and go to your first nine weeks, it will show it's locked. So you'd have to talk to an administrator about that. So stay on top of everything. 
I know it's a lot, but it'll become routine. Click on first nine weeks. You can choose a student, look at their demo page, you can look at their schedule. Student test analysis is where you find the information for their IEP as far as standardized test scores. Write down the information for the latest date, the course, the number score, and the level. You don't have to worry about district grades and all this. Just the course, scale, and level, along with the date. You can choose your SPED 504 and health conditions to be a reminder within your um, roster. You can check attendance for the day. Don't click sign off roll call. Choose the X. You can create assignments. New. I'm going to title this one Project 2. And save it. Okay. And once you put a grade in, give her a hundred. And you save. You have to make sure after you put all your numbers in, hit save, and it'll show you the score along with the OS interview right here. And I think that's it as far as. JPAMS is concerned. Um, it is jpams.lpssonline.com forward slash jcampus forward slash.